I am Robert Cecil, and I was born on June 1, 1563, into a prominent English family. Throughout my life, I played a significant role in the political intrigues and power struggles of the late 16th and early 17th centuries in England. My story, told in the first person, begins with my early years and traces my rise to power and influence. As a young man, I was educated at St. John's College, Cambridge, where I honed my intellect and developed a keen interest in politics. My father, William Cecil, was a trusted advisor to Queen Elizabeth I, and his guidance played a crucial role in shaping my own political career. In 1588, at the age of 25, I was elected as a member of Parliament for Westminster. This marked the beginning of my political journey, and I quickly made a name for myself as a skillful diplomat and strategist. Over the years, I served in various positions within the English government, including as Secretary of State, a role I inherited from my father. One of the most challenging tasks I faced during my career was managing the delicate relationship between England and Spain. Tensions between our two nations were high, and the threat of invasion by the Spanish Armada loomed large. I worked tirelessly to gather intelligence and secure alliances with other European powers to defend England. In 1588, when the Armada did eventually arrive, I played a crucial role in orchestrating England's successful defense. My influence only grew under the reign of King James I, who succeeded Queen Elizabeth in 1603. I continued to serve as Secretary of State and became a trusted advisor to the new king. My involvement in the famous gunpowder plot of 1605, in which a group of Catholic conspirators attempted to blow up the English Parliament and assassinate King James, showcased my dedication to preserving the Protestant monarchy. Throughout my career, I was known for my cunning and secrecy. I operated in the shadows, using my network of spies and informants to gather intelligence and maintain the security of the realm. My work as a diplomat and spymaster helped protect England from external threats and internal conspiracies. In 1612, I was elevated to the position of Lord Treasurer, becoming the most powerful man in England next to the King himself. However, my health began to deteriorate, and I retired from public life in 1618. I passed away on May 24, 1612, leaving behind a legacy of political intrigue and dedication to the English crown. My life was marked by service to my country and the pursuit of political stability in a turbulent era. I navigated the treacherous waters of Elizabethan and Jacobean politics, always striving to protect England and its monarchy from both foreign and domestic threats.